You ever wonder what happens when things stop working in Windows? If only we had a tool that will let us put everything right again. Well, Microsoft's had a tool for a long time. It's called System Restore, and I'm gonna show you all about it, where to go, how to use it, and how to make magic. All that and more, coming up now. Hello, everybody. My name is Adam Gordon, and I'm Tanner here at IT Pro TV. And I'm gonna spend some time talking with you about System Restore. What do you do when your computer stops working and you need to figure out how to make it all better? Well, Microsoft's had technology called System Restore for some time. This goes all the way back to Windows XP and even back even further in theory, uh, slight alteration and change in function, feel, and look, but certainly since Windows XP, Windows Vista, Windows 7, Windows 8, and now Windows 10, we've had the System Restore capability. It still looks and feels almost identical, still operates basically the same way, it's usually one of those set and forget kind of capabilities. As a matter of fact, it's actually turned on typically for you and is already operating, protecting your machine behind the scenes without you probably even giving it a second thought. But I wanna show you where we go to make sure it is operating and protecting your machine. If it's not configured, I wanna show you how to quickly set it up, create one or more restore points. Then we'll restart the machine. And we'll go to the advanced recovery capabilities and we'll see how we can use that system restore point to restore the machine if something's wrong. Join me here if you will. We'll We'll take a look at how we get started. We're on our desktop. I'm gonna to go to my start menu. I'm gonna start by typing in the words either restore or recovery. Either of those will get us to the area where we can see whether system restore is currently operating or not. And if it's not, encourage us to then go ahead and configure it. So I'm gonna hit my Windows start menu item and I'm simply gonna start typing the word restore. It's down there on the bottom in a little search area and restore or recovery brings up the recovery item. You can see right there, and I'm gonna click on it on the right, right over here in the control panel. And when I do that, what we're then gonna see is our advanced recovery tools. And I can create a recovery drive, but I can open system restore and or configure it right from here. Now, the first thing I said we're gonna do is take a look at whether system restore is actually configured. If not, be able to set it up. So we're gonna to go to the configure system restore option first. And when we do that, we're gonna be able to get to what is probably gonna look and feel familiar for most of you, especially if you have been using Windows for several generations. We're on the system properties, we're on the system protection tab, and you'll notice down below here, it says system restore, you can see it right there, and it shows any and all of the hard drives that are available in the system, and the protection settings column currently signifies that it's off, meaning, I do not have System Restore current op currently operating and configured on this machine, but rest assured, we can fix that easily, no worries. Right below there, it says Configure Restore Settings and the Configure button is available to us, unlike the Create button, which is currently grayed out. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna configure this. So I'm gonna click Configure. And when we do that, we're gonna get a little window that pops up. We'll just put that right here so you can see that. And we'll zoom right back in. You can see that we can turn on system protection just by toggling that radio button on. We then have to specify a maximum usage setting with our slider for the amount of space on the hard drive. We want to dedicate to the restore points that will be created. Two simple things, very easy. I'm going to turn this on. I'm going to go ahead and you'll notice as I move the slider, it starts to go up in Space, I'm just gonna zoom in and show you that, that I've set it to about 20% right now, roughly about almost 400 gigabytes of space will be dedicated there. I can then go ahead and click apply and okay. I don't have to worry about deleting any restore points because there are no current restore points there because the system has not been configured to use system restore yet. I'm gonna, I'm one of those people, by the way, that clicks apply before I click okay. You could tell how long someone's been using Windows technology by whether they go right to OK or whether they click Apply first. I'm going to click OK, but before I do that, let me just bring this front and center, and just zoom back in and show you that we now see the protection status on the main drive, the OS system drive is on. And notice I can now access the Create System Restore Point option to manually create a restore point because I don't have one created. Now I'm going to click there before I click OK. We're gonna give this restore point a name because we need a restore point if we wanna be able to see and use the technique for system restore from the advanced configuration items as we reboot the machine. So I'm gonna call this Adam-1. I'm gonna click Create. Now, this is gonna create our restore point. You see it's going through. Now, this can take a while, especially the first time that you set this up, depending on how big your hard drive is, how much data is there, and things like that. So, 
20, 30 minutes, maybe longer. Who knows? But we're going to let this run. We're going to cut away for a moment. Oh, actually, we don't even need to. It was that quick. I was going to say we're going to cut away and come back, but it actually fooled me. It happened a lot quicker than I thought it would. In the real world, when you're doing this, don't be surprised if it can take 20 or 30 minutes. But ours was pretty quick. All right, so you'll see it was created successfully. We're good. I'm going to go ahead and click close. I'm going to click OK. We're going to get out of here. And now we're going to see how we can actually restart the machine accessing that system restore capability in our advanced configuration area by using our restore capability. So we're going to go back to our start menu right down there. I'm going to go to my settings button right there. And in settings, I'm going to come down here and I'm going to go to update and security. And the reason we go there is that we can do a recovery capability, which is the second of the three items listed, Windows Update, Recovery, or Backup. So we're going to go ahead, we're going to click here, and we're going to go to our recovery area, which is right here. And when I do that, I'm going to get access to Advanced Startup right down here at the bottom before I click on it, just so you can see where we are. And you'll see this allows me to start up from an external device or disk. If I have a recovery drive, one of the options we could have set up where we were configuring system restore, you'll see I can go ahead and use that. I can change the PC's firmware settings, change Windows startup settings. That would be our boot menu if we're interested in accessing that. Or I can restore Windows from a system image. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to be able to restart and access the system restore features there. But before I do that, Let's do one other thing. Let's just minimize that for one second. Let's go back here. Let's type in restore one more time. Let's go back to recovery where we just were. And instead of configuring system restore, let's open it up and see what's there because we could actually use system restore right from within the graphical interface, right from the desktop. As long as everything's okay and everything is working, we can log in, we can get here. I can launch it right from here. So open system restore. And you'll see it says restore system files and settings. So that's encouraging. And the wizard says we could fix certain problems. It does not affect any of our data, documents, pictures, things like that. All that's good. Recently installed programs and drivers, however, might be uninstalled. That's really what we're here to focus on. So we click next. We do have at least one restore point in the real world as you're doing this and your system is automated and creating restore points every time you install or modify software. You'll have a bunch of these there. They'll just be listed in this little table. You can select the appropriate restore point. You'll see it says manual for type because I created it. You saw me do that just a moment ago. Whereas an automated one that the system creates maybe before you apply a patch or add new software, it'll simply say automatic. So we'll be able to select that particular restore point. And then we can go ahead, we can either click next immediately, or you'll see it says scan for affected programs. This will give us output telling us what is about to happen before we apply the system restore point, meaning will certain programs be uninstalled? Will certain drivers be modified or rolled back? Well, almost like a what if. This will tell us what we're about to do, helping us to understand that before it actually happens. Now, in my case, nothing's really going to happen if I did this, because the reality is, as you can see, I just created the restore point, so really nothing's going to change because I haven't done anything in the last several minutes to the machine that would in any way modify what we've done since the restore point was created. But this is what it would look like if you went and scanned and waited for that output to tell you what will happen. And what you would see here is that it will tell us what programs and drivers will be deleted, what programs and or drivers may be restored. We would obviously see some hopeful information there about things that are going to occur. So this has not done it yet. It's just showing us what it would do. You can then click Next. We then have to confirm our restore point date and time. It says if you have changed your Windows password recently, make sure you have a password reset disk in case you have to get back in. It's going to need to restart our computer to apply these changes. It says make sure you save anything that's open and or close all open programs. Now, I'm not going to actually restore my machine because it's going to look and feel the same. But I wanted you to see this and just see what we would do. You would just click Finish, and we would be off to the races. So this is how we could do it right from here. 
But remember, we said we're going to restart the machine using our advanced startup options. And we're going to see this from the recovery area. So let's click restart now. The machine is going to go down. It's going to take about 30 seconds to a minute to cycle. And what we're going to see is it's going to look like it's starting up again from our black screen. We'll see the Dell logo for my laptop appear on the screen here in just a moment. You're going to see it right here as soon as it powers cycles and comes up. When that happens, we're going to see almost immediately right below, right down below the Dell logo, right? Right here, instead of it just coming up, it's gonna say, please wait. We're gonna get a little spinning uh, circle like we see when we're starting up. There we go, right there. That's gonna come up, and then we're gonna get a nice blue screen that's gonna show up. Not the bad blue screen, but the nice blue screen, this color right here. We're gonna be able to choose some options and decide what we wanna do. Now we continue, go right back to Windows where we left off and just simply boot back up to our graphical interface. All is good. We can troubleshoot if we want to do that. That's where we're going to go in just a minute. Or we can power off our PC. Oops, I didn't mean to be here in the first place. Let me power that off and keep going. We're going to troubleshoot. And under troubleshoot, I can reset the PC. We saw those options. I can do a factory image restore. I can restore from an image of Windows 10, put it back to what it was when I took it out of the box, in other words. Or under advanced options, I can go ahead and I can for the reasons that I'm here, in this case, System Restore, I can engage in those activities. Now we have lots of different options going on here. We could do Startup Repair, if our startup files, our NT Loader file, our Master Boot Record, things like that may or may not be problematic. I can go into Startup Settings. This is where we access our boot menu, for instance. Remember the old boot menu? F8, and we can go to Safe Mode, all that kind of stuff, still here. Get to it right from there. We can get a command prompt from here and run certain commands. I can uninstall updates if I'm thinking that will fix the problem. I have a UEFI firmware settings where I can go in and modify the UEFI if I do use an updated version of what we used to call the BIOS or BIOS. I do have some more recovery options down below where I can do a factory image restore or I can do system restore. That's what we're here to see. So let's just go over here. Let's do system restore. We're going to wait for that to load. And this should look familiar to you. This is the exact same system restore screen we just saw on the desktop in Windows 10 a moment ago. I've got it here. We can go ahead and click next. I do have my restore point. I can highlight that same restore point. I can still scan for all affected programs just the way I did on the desktop. I can still click next. You'll see it still asks me to confirm my restore point right here before I do anything. I can click finish and then it will restore the machine and then restart and I'll be able to log back in the exact same way I would have done if I was on the Windows desktop. The only difference is I'm doing this from our advanced startup menu as opposed to doing it from within Windows itself. But either way, we wind up using the same technology, the same wizard, if you will, same restore points, and ultimately we have the same exact outcome if we choose to do a restore. So if you need system restore, if you wanna go ahead and use it and or, you're just not sure if it's even running and configured the right way, now you have all the information you need to not only protect your machine, but to make sure you know how to go in and restore if something were to go wrong. This and other Windows 10 helpful features, tips, and tricks. You can see me and all the people that work at IT Pro TV as we bring all this and more to you every day. Come over and check us out. We go through all sorts of training, not just on Windows, but on Linux, on VMware, on Cisco, you name it, we cover it. If you need more tips and tricks, you can watch for me or any of my colleagues, but until I come back with another helpful Windows 10 how-to, I'm gonna see you soon. I'm gonna wish you happy Windows 10-ing, and I'm gonna encourage you to keep restoring Make sure you back up your data. I'll see you soon.